All right, hello and welcome to another tutorial in Maya. Uh, what we're going to take a look at today is how to use the physical sun sky um, mental ray oh, sort of lighting engine. Um, the physical sun sky sort of emulates what a normal physical sun and sky would look like. And as you can see here, I have a basically just created an ocean down here. Um, and then uh, a sphere up there at the top and a, a kind of a craft and so essentially the physical sun and sky is used to sort of simulate natural daylight or something going on in the daytime and uh, that's what we're going to be taking a look at today how to kind of work with that node so to speak so we'll be in mental ray so let's take a quick look um, there's the scene as I have it now um, there's nothing too special going on here I uh, just have a craft. Um, it's not quite modeled, needs a lot more detail and stuff. But really what I'm concerned about right now is just some lighting. And uh, that uh, this physical sun sky kind of gives us some cool options. I'm going to pause it right here for a second. And as you can see here, I have a sphere in the sky with a... my uh, it, Actually, it's a mental ray, just a metallic uh, um, uh, shader. So nothing too special going on there and uh, then I have the ocean here I messed around with the shader on the ocean a little bit and uh, pretty much everything is starting from default so with that in mind let's take a deeper look at uh, this physical sun sky thing all right so I'm gonna also show you right here uh, what I've done in a composite in After Effects um, essentially this is the same thing but I've added a picture into the background back here so you can see where you know it's the same render but without the alpha channel so uh, that kind of gave me this uh, yeah it's a compositing kind of thing in After Effects if you're going for a background and you don't necessarily need it to match a physical sky but in this case I just attached an image that sort of had the same color of blue up there so and same kind of lighting so no big deal all right, let's take a quicker look at that. Uh, let's take a look at that. Here's where I am in the scene so far, and this is what it looks like in Maya. Um, let's just go ahead and um, let's go ahead and create a new scene. So I'm just going to go to File. I'll just uh, do a new scene, and I don't need to save those changes. So right here, let's just get started. Make sure you're in your rendering menu set, and um, actually come over here to uh, not your rendering, but dynamics. Um, Let's go to dynamics and let's go to our fluid effects and just sort of start with an ocean and we'll create that ocean and there it is and why don't we just while we're at it just scale it up a bit I'm gonna bring it up to kind of like there and we'll go ahead and create a uh, let's create a sphere to work with just to kind of begin with I'll go ahead and put the shaded mode on there and let's bring it up a little bit okay so now we have a sphere and we have an ocean and let's take a little tool around that scene, maybe see what we got. And before we get started, let's set this to about 300 keyframes, or I mean 300 frames. And um, we'll just take a look at what it looks like on, on default. So there it is. Let's take a quick render. And you'll notice that's what we have so far. Okay, well, right now I'm in Maya software. And what I really want to be in when we're doing the physical sun sky stuff is you want to be in mental ray so go ahead and switch over to mental ray and um, you know maybe pull up your render settings and let's take a look at our render settings now the first thing to do to get started with using this uh, physical sun sky is to come over here into your indirect lighting tab right away and so I'll click in there it's going to open up and it's going to offer me a couple of different options and right now what we're interested in is physical sun and sky so I'm going to go ahead and just hit create and you'll notice that it does a couple of things over here it gives you a tab for your physical sky in a sun direction but really at the moment we're interested in some other things in the, in the hypershade so if you come over and get into your hypershade right away And this is all sort of a procedure for setting up a physical sun sky. Let's come over into the hypershade and take a look at the utilities tab. Uh, and I'm going to click on there. Now, as you can see, this is where you find your controls for the physical sun and sky. 
and you wouldn't otherwise think about looking for them in there but this is where you're going to find your physical sun sky so right away um, let's take a render just because we've assigned it a physical sun sky i'm going to move this out of the way i'm going to close my render settings for the moment and my render view i think i'll leave here and i'm going to go ahead and hit render and we're going to see what just the default looks like and <laughs> That looks kind of ugly. I mean, now this is a starting point, okay? So roughly you can see where it's it's replaced a physical sky. There's kind of a background in there. And um, if I were to move the background attributes, which we'll do later, I'll kind of show you how that works. So anyway, here's our sky and here's the light. But in order to start messing with these, we have to kind of come over and remember in the hypershade and let's come into the um, the physical sun first and just take a look at what's going on in the physical sun. Um, you can see where you have some attributes right here and in this case you have a multiplier, you have some saturation, some various settings. Well if you go over into the physical sky portion you'll notice that you have kind of the same things. You kind of have the same options. So right now we're sort of controlling things um, from the physical sky. So let's work with that node for a second. And let's take a look at the first attribute, the multiplier. And uh, let's see if I can get in there. We'll move this up here. And there it is. Okay, so the multiplier, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add, make this instead of 1.0, 2.0. And click in here. Now one of the things you'll see me doing a lot during this demonstration is that I have to click inside one of these other boxes because there's a bug in Maya which absolutely drives me nuts. If I were to change this to like say one and then click on my render view over here it sometimes will take and sometimes it won't. Like there it's at one. I'm gonna set it at two and I'm just gonna click over here and do a render. And sometimes it takes and sometimes it doesn't. So usually you'll see me clicking in another box just because that's where I have to, to click so that I can set it. I'm on a Mac and I don't know if you have the same problem or not but it's so annoying not being able to click in the interface somewhere here and have whatever you did here stick. So anyway just be aware of that. Um, the multiplier you can see where I switched it to 2 it's getting really bright so let's switch that back down to like 0 0.250 and let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and do a render. Okay, so you can see where right now it's affecting the sky and the shading and kind of everything that's going on in there. And that's okay for the moment. Let's just work with an average. Let's work with it at, let's say, 0.500 and see what happens there. I'm going to do a quick render. Okay, so there it's about normal brightness. Let's just leave it like that for the moment. And let's go in and uh, check out some of these other other things. You can see where you have a horizon height. Right now it's set at zero, and this is the horizon height. What if I were to set the horizon height to, um, let's see, let's set it to like two. Let's see what happens. I'll do a quick render. Okay, now you can see the horizon is actually way up here, which is not where we want it. So. We'll go ahead and set this horizon height back down to zero. All right, so we'll go to horizon height and go to zero, and we'll see what a render looks like. And there it is. Now, I'm gonna go back to the horizon height and set it at one for a moment. And we'll take a quick render. And there it is. Now, if I come in here to my, my physical sky um, right here, and come over here and you can look at what say is the ground color and essentially this is the ground color I'm gonna switch that up a little bit we'll switch it to say something more in the yellow so we can see what it's doing and I'll do a quick uh, do a quick render as you can see that's what your ground color is affecting so you know essentially in this case that's a little too bright I might want to just go ahead and bring that down a little bit maybe in color and uh, we'll we'll work with it for we'll work with it right there for the moment. 
or I could have it match my ocean, which is probably more so what I should do. So I'll come in here and, and sort of just, you know, try and find a color that kind of matches what the ocean is. And we'll do another render. And there you go. And let's set this horizon height back down to like, say, negative one. All right, I'm going to set it to negative one. And hopefully we'll get something that looks a little more natural. So we kind of got rid of the horizon. We replaced it even if it shows up with this uh, color of ground. So anyway, that's what that's all about. Now, um, the night color just is going to affect um, the color if you have um, your light moving from side to side um, and like at the end of the day, if you want to see a little bit more color and what that lighting is, you would bring that up. So essentially all these things are just what they mean. Um, the sun disk intensity and scale are if you actually see the sunlight in here, you can sort of mess around with its intensity and its the disk scale, meaning how, how large it is. So that's just something to be aware of for now. But in this case, that's kind of what those are about. Now, let's take a look at these R, uh, the RGB conversions. If you bring one of these up, like let's say we brought it up in the blue quite a bit. I'll just bring it up a little bit and let's take a quick render. And as you can see, that really messes with it. It could be good for effects, but for the um, time being, we kind of want to stay at our default point. Uh, what is it? Uh, 0 0.000100. So anyway, that should put us back to normal. And there you go. Okay, so the physical sun sky, uh, you know, is, it, you have to mess around with it quite a bit. There's not a lot going on in there. Um, you can come in here and look at your, your uh, sun samples. And also, um, let's take a look at the exposure right here. You can see where my exposure, it just gives me a simple node right here that lets me step up the pedestal or the gain or the knee. Uh, you can play around with those at your own on your own time here, but I'll just do a quick gain adjustment. We'll go pull it up in its gain which is going to give us a, a kind of a, a heavier, brighter, much brighter picture. And I'm going to bring that gain down quite a bit and we'll do see what happens there. So anyway, there you go. So you get the idea. Um, essentially, that's what I did um, to just mess around with these. Um, I actually went into this uh, ocean shader here. And if I just go into my materials, I messed around with the color of my ocean shader. You can actually change your shader up to like, let's say you wanted a little more green and maybe a little darker like that. You can go ahead and do that. Um, you know, there you go. So actually for mine, um, if you want to know how to do a cool, quick material, I came down to Mental Ray, went into my materials. I just got a car paint right there, just basic. And I clicked on that car paint, changed my base color to something more like, say, a, a little bit like a gray. Then I took the lit color and changed that to something more like a like a, a bright blue. I think something like that up there. And I uh, left the other things the same. Now let's just attach that uh, color to to the sphere here. I'm going to bring that out of the way. Go in here. We'll attach that to the sphere. Sign existing material, car paint, and there you go. So let's take a quick render and see what we got. And a lot of times the car paint will just give you a, a nice, you know, kind of, um, yeah, it'll just give you like a metallic kind of uh, reflective surface there. And remember, you're going to have to go in and adjust a lot of things when you're working with this physical sun sky. But essentially, once you have it set up, um, everything works pretty good. Now, another thing to be aware of is that, you know, in your physical sun sky or whatever, that you have, um, you know, uh, for your different objects and whatnot, um, you know, enable everything for mental ray. Um, take a look at everything that's going on with, you know, whether or not stuff is visible in transparency, whatnot. And also keep in mind, you want to maybe switch over here to, into your quality section and bring that up to a production quality. So now if I just take a quick render, you'll see where, there you go. 
so it looks a little better. But play around with that. These are the techniques. It's the concept. And uh, as always, read a book every day. Be the best person you can possibly be. Thanks for watching.